1987 mile in Michigan. Here on ESPN, Hank Endres gave us a graphic demonstration of what happens when 3,000 horsepower rears up. Despite this titanic crash, Endres was unhurt, but out of championship contention for 1987. That's the kind of International Hot Rod Association drag racing excitement that has brought over 500 competitors, 40,000 fans, and our ESPN cameras to the next stop on the IHRA Tour, Norwalk Raceway Park in Norwalk, Ohio. The fastest guns in drag racing are here, shooting for their share of a purse of over half a million dollars. Championships in four professional classes are at stake, and they're ready for the green light in Ohio. ESPN, the world leader in motorsports coverage, presents Speed World. Raceway Park, about halfway between Toledo and Cleveland, Ohio, near the shores of Lake Erie, is the site for round six of the International Hot Rod Association Championship Tour. Hello, everyone. I'm Bob Varsha, welcoming you to Norwalk, Ohio. Joining me to help analyze today's Motorcraft World Nationals is former drag racer and radio announcer, now an official with the IHRA, Ted Jones. Ted, welcome back to the microphone. Thank you very much, and welcome to Bill Bader's beautiful Norwalk Raceway Park, Bob. Norwalk is both beautiful and fast, one of the fastest tracks on the IHRA series, and because of that, we should see a lot of action today. A lot of action indeed. Gene Snow, Mr. Unbeatable in Pro Nitro Dragster, has two wins back-to-back -back here on ESPN. Mark Oswald has four wins this year in the IHRA circuit. Who can stop him? And in Pro Stock, it took a 737 just to get into the field today at Norwalk. It should be a war, and covering all the action at trackside will be Brett Kepner. Let's get his thoughts on today's events right now. Norwalk Raceway Park, located just outside of Toledo, Ohio, is annually the host of the International Hot Rod Association Motorcraft World Nationals. Because of this racetrack's proximity to Lake Erie, in fact, it's only a mile off the shore of the lake, the air quality here can create some of the quickest and fastest runs in the sport. We'll be looking forward to that kind of record-breaking action here at the IHRA World Nationals in Norwalk, Ohio. Thank you, Brett. The IHRA Motorcraft World Nationals from Norwalk Raceway Park are brought to you by Motorcraft. Quality parts for all makes of cars and trucks. They exceed the need. And by Drag Review. All you need to know about drag racing. We have warm, sunny skies and a quarter mile of asphalt awaits the competitors. The ground-pounding excitement of International Hot Rod Association drag racing is coming up with quarterfinal action from the Pro Nitro Dragsters. Stay with us. We're back at Norwalk, Ohio, and ready for quarterfinal action in Pro Nitro Dragsters. Making a return to IHRA competition after a three-year absence, this man, Jerry Marconi, the number eight qualifier, will take on this man, top qualifier Joe Amato of Old Forge, Pennsylvania. Top qualifier indeed. Joe Amato has to be the favorite to win. There you see him backed up by his wife, Jerry, into those hot rubber tracks. Amato won the season opening IHRA Winter Nationals in Darlington, South Carolina. They're ready, Bob. And they're away. Amato in the far lane. Marconi in the near lane. A little bit loose, but he's out front, and he holds off Amato. An incredible upset for Jerry Marconi from Wakanda, Illinois, as he beats Joe Amato. Let's take a look at it again. You'll see Marconi leave first. He beats Amato off the line by about two hundredths of a second and holds on to win by about 12 inches. 
that was a world-class upset. Your 547, a near career best for you, just beat Joe Amato's 546. A whole shot win defeating one of the toughest strikers in the world. God, I don't believe it. But I'll tell you what, I'm, I'm ecstatic about it. I really am. You certainly have right to be. 260 miles an hour to Amato's losing 264. Uh, it proves that you outdrove him on the top end, or at least we're right with him. Uh, quite a chore for an extra boat team from Chicago, huh? I, I think so. I think we're moving up now. We finally got some problems worked out in the car, and I think uh, if you watch us, we'll be starting to run up like we should be. All right, on the heels of a huge upset, we'll go to one of the big marquee matchups of the afternoon, Gene Snow, points leader coming into Norwalk, second qualifier out of Fort Worth, Texas. He'll be facing this man, number seven qualifier, Dan Pastorini, the former football quarterback from Richmond, Texas. Pastorini, or Dante, as he's called by all of his friends, driving the tour silver bullet. Now, Pastorini's had a problem all year long with this guy, Gene Snow, who's been dominating the IHRA trail. Pastorini would like nothing better than to get past this man Snow, I'm sure Snow has other ideas. Pastorini approaching the line. The lights flash their stage and they're away. Pastorini in the near lane, gets way over near that center line. Tight race and Pastorini pulls it off. He beats Snow. He's done it. Dan Pastorini has upset Gene Snow, the current points leader, and stopped his progression. So Dan Pastorini will advance into the semifinals with a great 5.55 ET, 260.87 miles per hour. And so the former NFL oiler beats the oil man from Fort Worth. Here's another look at the run. Pastorini getting the wheels up off the line. You see Pastorini leaving first. He stays in it, lets the front end settle back down and begins to motor past snow. Brett Kepner will talk to Pastor Reedy. You've just accomplished something that nobody's been able to do in two months. Beat Gene Snow. 555 to 561. It was tight. Gene's been running real well. He's uh, He's been the guy to beat on the circuit so far, and we knew that we had to step up. We've had our problems with our fuel system and everything, but I think I think Jimmy and the guys got it figured out that last run. The last two runs, we've been real consistent, and the car is nice and dry, so I don't think we've heard anything on it. It should be uh, real good. I think consistent is the key word here because you're running exactly like you were in qualifying, so you're keeping that kind of pace. Right, so we, uh, if we can keep that up and step up a little bit, I know those other guys are going to be tough in the second round, that's for sure. Well, one thing's for sure. Quarterfinal action has been tough on the top seeds. The first and second qualifiers are gone. Here is number three, Jack Ostrander, the number three qualifier out of Pontiac, Michigan. And he will be taking on this man, number six qualifier, Bill Mullins of Pelham, Alabama. Mullins was runner-up at the recently completed Motorcraft Northern Nationals as seen here on ESPN. He's the guy that was defeated by Gene Snow in the final, and they're ready. Good race. You see Mullins on the inside. The tires smoke on Ostrander's car, but he holds his advantage to the finish. Jack Ostrander pulls out a good win with a 5.497, 257.14 mile per hour. Not too shabby, Bob. Not at all. Considering those traction problems he had on the way there, you see the numbers for Jack Ostrander. Great run beating Mullins. Now in our other quarterfinal matchup, John Carey, the number four qualifier, had a solo run when Glenn Mikris could not get his car fired at the start line. Solo effort for Carey, and he'll move on to the semis. And here's the way they'll line up. Marconi will meet Carey in one bracket. Dan Pastorini will take on Jack Ostrander in the other. And now we will move on to Pro Alcohol Funny Cars, their second full season in IHRA championship competition. This man right here leading the points, this is Bob Newberry, and he's going to be running a gentleman who would very much like to upset him. This is Don DeFluter. Don DeFluter is number two in the points, and he just has not been able to get around Newberry this season. Both had easy runs in the first round, and now they meet in the quarterfinals. It will be DeFluter in the far lane, Newberry in the yellow car in the near lane as the staging lights flash, and they're away. Newberry moves first, but here comes DeFluter. He's right beside Newberry. An upset could be in the making. Yes. And Don DeFluter manages to drive around Bob Newberry. He beats the points leader, and you can tell by his crew just how much that means to them. This is exactly what Don DeFluter needed. Now he can move in on Bob Newberry. He has stopped the one man that's had him upset all season long. There you see the figures on Don DeFluter, a 6.40, 214 mile an hour. Moving on to our next match, Pete Gallen in Poverty Stricken, an Oldsmobile bodywork. He will be taking on this man, Bogey Kell, in the nicest turned out car in the field. Bogey Kell, the number four qualifier out of Atala, Alabama in Southern Thunder. 
Bogey Kell, who waves those stars and bars every time he wins around in IHRA drag racing, has not won an IHRA event for nine years, but Bogey's always right in the thick of things, as is Peter Gallon. Bogey Kell of Atala, Alabama, taking on Gallon from Newton Square, Pennsylvania. Joe Lapone's hometown. There you see Gallon in the right lane. The green light flashes their way. Gallon got out front, and Bogey Kell gets a little bit happy there, but he manages to overtake Gallon and take the victory. Bogey Kell upsetting Peter Gallon in the Olds Forenza poverty stricken car. There goes Bogey Kell's crew. Down up comes the flag by tradition, as they do it at every event. They'll go down and pick up, I'm sure, a very excited and happy Bogey Kell. A big crowd favorite, Bogey Kell, at 6.438 and 216 miles an hour. He will move on to the semifinals. In the other quarterfinals, Arnie Carp, the number six qualifier, met Jim Bailey, the number 14 man out of Mantua, Ohio. Carp away the winner in that quarterfinal. And in the other, Monty Todd, the number 16 qualifier out of Montgomery, Alabama, could not get it to fire. A very dejected Todd had to climb out of his dead machine. And that gave Herb Rogers, the number eight qualifier, a solo run and a free ride into the semis. That's very significant, Bob, because Monty Todd is number three currently in the IHRA points. He needed to win very badly, so a tough break for Monty Todd. And that puts Don DeFluter in real good position to pick up valuable championship points. He'll meet Arnie Karp in one semifinal, and it'll be Kell versus Rogers in the other pro-alcohol funny semi. And we'll be back for more IHRA championship drag racing action from Norwalk Raceway Park in Norwalk, Ohio, right after this. Norwalk, Ohio, where we're ready for quarterfinal action of Pro Nitro Funny Cars. And this man, Doc Holliday, has a points battle on his hands. He'll be facing Jim White, the number six qualifier. Doc Holliday, indeed, number two of the points, needs to keep advancing on and get past Jim White. White driving the Mohawk Express Oldsmobile and Holiday in a Daytona. Holiday near lane, White in the far lane. White looks to be in good shape and take. No, I don't think so. It looks like the chutes came out a little he bit early. He opened the chutes early. Doc Holiday drives around him. A serious error by Jim White. Now the chute may have shaken out. Let's watch and see if there's a lot of tire shake. Jim White definitely out in front of Doc Holiday as they move down toward the quarter mile. Watch for the parachutes. There you see them blossoming early, and Doc Holiday zips on by. Oh, what a lucky break for Doc Holliday, who, as we mentioned, badly needs championship points here. Now, the next quarterfinal, we'll have Ed the Ace McCullough, the number two qualifier out of Hemet, Mal California, excuse me. One of the great names in funny car drag racing. He'll be facing the son of a great name, Scott Kalitta, son of the fuel dragster great Connie Kalitta. Number seven qualifier is Scott out of Belleville, Michigan, and this should be a great race. McCullough and Coletta both stage. They're out together, and McCullough has a little bit of problem. Now Coletta weaving around as both cars both loose, and McCullough an easy win. Scott Coletta got very close to the center line. That would have been automatic disappointment. Let's take another look. Watch the driving job as Coletta tries to tiptoe along that center line. That caused him to slow down. McCullough not having tire shake problems, moves on by and opens the gap to take an easy victory. So, Ed McCulloch, there you see the numbers, 5888, great run. Jack Wyatt, the number eight qualifier out of Allerton, Iowa, is in the next quarterfinal matchup, and he has got to face number one qualifier, Mark Oswald, out of nearby Cleves, Ohio, and he is darn near unbeatable on this racetrack. Team. Not only number one qualifier, number one in the point standings, the defending world champion, Mark Oswald, driving the Candies and Hughes-owned Motorcraft Thunderbird, and out they go. It looks like Oswald's going to be out front. He'll have an easy win, even though he breaks loose at about the 200-foot mark. You saw the tire smoke there is Mark Oswald didn't get quite the traction that he wanted but still a somewhat glum looking crew heck those guys don't look very happy at all but another victory for the famous Candies and Hughes car this is Jim Head from Westerville Ohio uh, Jim driving the wild 
old Forenza body car, one of the most controversial cars in drag racing, and there you have Tom McEwen, his opponent from Fountain Valley, California. McEwen, the number four qualifier, head the number five qualifier, very evenly matched cars. You see head in the near lane, McEwen in the far lane. Not yet staging, time for a little dry hop, get those tires up to operating temperatures. They'll try and see if they have the clutches set and how hot the traction is, and oh, a problem. Jim Head going up in smoke as he uh, does his burnout. Now that could be trouble. Oswald hooked up very nicely, Bob. That's right, on that dry hop, we didn't want to see a little bit of smoke. They expected to get that one away cleanly. Looks like Head is spinning the tires a little bit, not getting the traction he wants as he prepares for the race. But the engines are fired, the car's about to stage. Not a whole lot he can do about it. No, uh, Jim Head can feather it just a little bit off the line, but that's difficult to do with a 3,000 horsepower nitromethane powered machine. On the other hand, I'm sure that McEwen will use it to his advantage if he saw the tire smoke by Jim Head when they did that dry burnout. Time to stage, so Jim Head will have to drive an ill-handling car, making up for what the mechanics of that machine won't do for him. You see them come forward. When the yellow lights flash, they'll be staged. The three yellow lights will flash, meaning the green is next. They're both pre-staged now. That's about eight inches from the stage beam. The Coors Corvette and McEwen stages first. Now Head's ready. There goes the green, and out they go. There you see it. Head gets loose and shuts it down. Just what we thought might happen when you saw that smoke on that initial burnout. Head got loose. He got near the center line and had to shut it off. Tom McEwen to an easy victory. And so Tom McEwen at 579 will move on into the semifinals with an easy victory over Jim Head in the quarters. Tom McEwen shutting off just a little early, uh, coasting through at 248.62 miles per hour. And as McEwen wheels the Corvette onto the rundown area, we'll take a look at the Nitro Funny Car Semis. Mark Oswald will meet Tom McEwen in one bracket. Look for Ed the Ace McCullough to meet Doc Holliday in the other. Time now for the big crowd pleasers, Pro Stock. The closest thing to a stock street car, but nothing like it when you get under that engine hood. 500 cubic inches of power, maybe 900 horses or so. And we will see Carlton Phillips in the black Chevy Camaro, the number six qualifier out of Vienna, Virginia. He'll be meeting Ed Dixon in the near lane, and they're away. Phillips is out first. Look at Dixon carry the wheels. This could be anyone's race. Phillips starts pulling ahead now as they hit high gear. Carlton Phillips. And we're used to seeing close racing in pro stock. We sure got it. Carlton Phillips, the winner. Great time, great top speed. Next uh, quarterfinal matchup will be Tim Neighbors, the number four qualifier out of Lawrenceville, Georgia. He'll meet Bob Olson, the number five qualifier out of Elgin, Illinois. Bob Olson, one of the match race kings. He's in partnership with Gary Stewart. And Tim Neighbors, a regular on the i Cherry Trail. Funny, tough. Neighbors is out, and Olson right beside him. It looks like Neighbors in the far lane with a slight lead. Neighbors pulls fourth gear, and yes. Looks like Tim Neighbors very narrowly at 7.44 seconds. The narrow victory over Bob Olson. We'll take another look. We'll take a look at this. I want you to notice the ETs on this, Bob. They both have identical 7.44, and they both ran exactly 189 mile an hour. And as we get to the finish line, you'll be able to see why. Look at that. About two feet, the entire gap there for Tim Neighbors. Our next quarterfinal matchup will be Jerry Haas out of St. Louis, Illinois, the number two qualifier, facing this man, Jim Ruth, the number 10 qualifier. He beat number seven, Terry Adams, in the first round, so this should be another uh -oh, good race. Oh, Ruth red lighted, I believe. Ruth leads very early in the pure Pontiac car, and I think he's turned on the red light. However, Haas motors buy him anyway with a terrific 747. Watch now. You see Ruth's front end, and there's the foul light on the Christmas tree indicating an automatic win for Jerry Hawes. But look at the top end charge by Hawes. He beat Ruth anyway. And he knows that car. He builds Pro Stock Racers, does Jerry Hawes. And we'll tell you a little bit more about that as the day goes on. Now, earlier, first round action. Defending IHRA champion Ricky Smith and a Thunderbird in the right lane facing Roy Hill in the left lane. And watch this one, folks. This is a real upset. Roy Hill noses out Ricky Smith. You can hardly tell who won. Roy Hill with a 732, 188 mile an hour. That gentleman is in this race, and he is to be dealt with. Well, after facing one Motorcraft Ford Thunderbird, Roy Hill, you see him there in his T-Bird, will face this man, the winningest drag racer in history, Bob Glidden out of Whiteland, Indiana. 
Hill must feel like the deck stacked against him. First Smith, then Glidden. What's he going to do? Glidden, out of shape, has to shut it down. Glidden had tire problem off the starting line. Roy Hill has upset both Motorcraft Thunderbirds. This is incredible. So Roy Hill, a neighbor and friend of the Petty family, a guy who's won a race or two out of North Carolina. Roy Hill says he got into drag racing so he wouldn't have to go into stock car racing and race his buddy, the Petties. There you see Glidden getting just a little bit crooked off of the starting line. Roy Hill stays on it, turns a 737, 189 mile an hour. Brett Kepner talks to Roy Hill. Well, getting out of the car, a man with a job to do who is getting it done. Standing next to car builder Jerry Haas, uh, Roy Hill, what a job. Like I said, you came here with a job to do, you're getting it done. Getting past Ricky Smith first round, Bob Glidden second round, you may be on your way to a repeat here. <laughs> I'm just real lucky right now. Anytime you beat that man over there, You've done something. We was at ATCO here the other day, and we wasn't quite this lucky, and I'm just thankful to be here. The most incredible thing about this is we're only in the second round of eliminations now, and we've already gone through the kind of action we usually see in the semifinal and final rounds, and you've still got two rounds to go, but uh, you're hot. <laughs> right now, let's just hope it holds out, buddy. Boy, hot's not the word for it. Having knocked out the event sponsors two namesake cars, Roy Hill will meet Tim Neighbors in one Pro Stock Semi, look for Jerry Haas against Carlton Phillips in the other. And we'll be back for more IHRA drag racing coming up. Semi-final action in all four pro classes from Norwalk, Ohio. Stay where you are. Welcome back to Norwalk Raceway Park in Norwalk, Ohio. Bob Barsh and Ted Jones with you as we take a close look at Dante Pastorini, the former NFL quarterback turned drag racer. Look at the intensity in his eyes. This man is all serious. It's just like quarterbacking behind that professional football starting line. He means business. Pastorini turned in a fantastic 555 at 260 mile an hour in the quarterfinals. And he'll be meeting Jack Ostrander with a 549 at 267 miles an hour. Pastorini knocked off top qualifier Gene Snow in the, uh, in the quarterfinals. And now he will face Ostrander, who put down Bill Mullins in his heat. Remember, Pastorini, the athlete, hopes that his prowess will be sharp for this race because Ostrander went much quicker in that semifinal round. Ostrander smoking the tires in the far lane, but still close. And I think Ostrander holds on. He does at 551. Great race. What an incredible race as they were wheel to wheel down the drag strip. Watch, Pastorini actually is out first. Then Ostrander begins to move forward. Now they go side by side, wheel to wheel as they move up to the finish line. It's anyone's race, and it's going to be Ostrander barely nosing Pastorini. Add up reaction times and ETs, and that was a victory by one one thousandth of a second. Now we're ready for semi number two in Pro Nitro Dragster. Jerry Marconi at 547 and 260 miles an hour. He beat Joe Amato, the top qualifier in the quarters. John Carey had a solo run when Glenn Micris couldn't get his car to fire at the starting line. They will now meet in the semis. Carey only turning a 725 at 189 mile an hour, so we're not really sure what he's capable of doing right now. But you can bet Jerry Marconi's going to give it all he's got. They're both staged. Here they come. Yeah, and Marconi is out of the race. Look at it. He spins the tires, gets all kinds of smoke, but now yeah, Carey's had a problem. He stays in it, and Marconi pulls the win out. This is incredible, but it looked like he heard a motor. You see the smoke coming from the pipes. Watch this, folks. Jerry Marconi could have given up right here as he smokes the tires. As a matter of fact, I think that's what Kerry did. He actually shut down after smoking the tires, shut the car off, thought Marconi was out of it. Surprise, there's Marconi, and look at the smoke from the engine. That could be significant. And so we may have terminal damage to that engine. We'll have to get word from the pits. But as it is, Jerry Marconi, the number eight qualifier, will go to the Pro Nitro Dragster Final, where he will meet Jack Ostrander. Ostrander with the lower ET will have the lane choice. And now we move on to Pro Alcohol Funny Car Semifinals. Our first matchup will have the white car of Don DeFluter, the number two qualifier. He's looking for points against this man, Arnie Karp, with a 6.5, 213 miles an hour in his quarterfinal victory against Jim Bailey. There you see DeFluter, who beat points leader Bob Newberry in the quarterfinals. Should be a good one here. Arnie Karp, the Boston Strangler, sponsored by Pepsi, has been unstoppable in the last two races on the IHRA trail. DeFluter knows it. Karp's the guy that's been beating Newberry, doing the job DeFluter wanted to do. 
Now De Fluter has to stop Carp if he's to gain any of those valuable IHRA points. Here they come. De Fluter out in front. Carp moves slightly ahead now to the finish line. Carp! And Arnie Karp out of Peabody, Massachusetts, knocks off Don DeFluter. And you saw DeFluter having some traction problems as he moved very close to the center line. But Arnie Karp at 6.46 and 220 miles an hour, great run. Our next semifinal will have Bogey Kell and Southern Thunder at 216 miles an hour in his victory in the quarters over Peter Gallen facing this man, Herb Rogers in the Flying Glass Mustang. He had an easy run into the semis when Marty Todd had mechanical problems at the start line. This is a Canada versus the USA. Herb Rogers, the Mustang-bodied Flying Glass, is from Canada. Bogey Kell from the southern part of the United States, Atala, Alabama. Look at the paint job on that car and the beautiful mural on the front end of that you can tell Bogey is a proud Southerner. We mentioned alcohol funny cars in their second full season of championship pro racing. And as they're away, looks like Southern Thunder and Bogey Kell moves away to a car length victory. The South will rise again. Bogey Kell doing a little wheel stand off the starting line. Stayed right in it. Watch the wheels come up. Watch Bogey drive it right on through the car. A little crooked. Bogey straightens. What an excellent driving job and keeps right on top of it to stay out in front of Rogers and take the victory. A tremendous victory for Bogey Kell. Keep in mind, he has never won an IHRA Alcohol Funny Car National Event. And so, our matchup in Pro Alcohol Funny Car Finals will be Bogey Kell against Arnie Karp. Karp will have lane choice. Once again, the low ET means you get to choose. Lots more racing still to come from Norwalk, Ohio, and the Motorcraft World Nationals coming up next, Pro Nitro Funny Car Semifinals. Back at Norwalk Raceway Park in the IHRA Motorcraft World Nationals. Bob Varsha and Ted Jones with you. And we're ready for Pro Nitro Funny Car Semifinals. A couple of lucky qualifiers. There's Ed the Ace McCullough in his Miller American Olds, who beat Scott Kalitta, who got way out of shape and almost crossed the center line in his quarterfinal heat. And he'll be facing Doc Holliday in his Telstar Dodge Daytona, who won his quarterfinal heat when Jim White shoot pop prematurely. There you see Ed McCulloch's numbers, 588 at 247 miles an hour, beating Scott Kalitta. Doc Holliday, very close to the same numbers, 588 at 254, as he beat Jim White. What a race this is going to be. Doc Holliday, who has been racing for 30 years against Ed the Ace McCullough, two old veterans. Look at McCullough pulling the front end off the ground, pulling away consistently from Doc Holliday, and he has an easy win, Bob. And so Ed McCullough, who we saw in his race against Scott Kalitta, drove straight and true. He really has that Miller Olds hooked up well. There you see, 572 at 244 miles an hour. Ed McCullough will go on to the finals. Our next semifinal will feature the defending world champ, Mark Oswald. There you see Leonard Hughes. He's the genius, the man that makes this car run so strong. And you see right there Tom McEwen being backed into his tracks. This is going to be one great semifinal. A couple of great veterans. Mark Oswald at 584 and 248 miles an hour beat Jack Wyatt in his quarterfinal round. Tom McEwen at 579 and 248 miles an hour beat Jim Head. Tom McEwen has been running very strong lately in the Coors Corvette. Don't forget, Dale Armstrong doing the wrenching today on that car, and they're out. And there you see Oswald in the near lane, but McEwen in the far lane looks like he's got it. Very got it. close, very close. It looks like Mark Oswald, the tire tells us, wins that one in the near lane. Wow, thank goodness for electric eyes, folks. Watch this finish. McEwen on the left in the far lane, and Oswald, the defending IHRA Funny Car World Champion, in the right lane, just gets there. Got a six-foot victory, I'd make it. And so we will have Mark Oswald, the number one qualifier, facing Ed the Ace McCulloch, the number two qualifier. You can't ask for better than that in the Pro Nitro Funny Car Finals. McCulloch with the lower ET, get to choose his lane. That could be very important indeed. We move on now to Pro Stock semifinal action. There you see Carlton Phillips out of Vienna, Virginia. He beat Ed Dixon in the quarterfinals. Carlton Phillips, who once had a car stolen from a parking lot after qualifying for a Nationals event, he'll be facing this guy, Jerry Haas, who won James Ruth, who red-lighted in the quarterfinal. There you see Haas, who builds race cars as well as driving them. There's Carlton Phillips at 7.45 and 187 miles an hour. Both of these guys running consistent seven. 40s. This could be anybody's race. Their stage. Carlton Phillips out first. He left on Jerry Hawes. Let's see if Hawes can come around him. Hawes still behind Phillips, holding him off. And at the end, Hawes nips him. 
Jerry Haas with a spectacular come from behind victory has taken out Carlton Phillips and there you see the happy crew. Great effort for Jerry Haas, 759, 187 miles an hour. Jerry Haas with that top end charge running 187 miles an hour. Our next semi matchup, we'll have Roy Hill, our top qualifier who's already beaten Ricky Smith and Bob Glidden. He'll meet this guy, Tim Neighbors, who at 7.4 and 189 beat number five qualifier Bob Olson in the quarters. Roy the Giant Killer has bumped off the two top pro stalkers in the entire nation to uh, get into the semifinals against Tim Neighbors. Tim, very young with quick reflexes though. Don't count him out of this in that beautiful new 87 Camaro. They're staged and out. And there you see Roy Hill, far lane. Tim Neighbors giving him all he can handle in the near lane, but I think Roy Hill is out front and yes. Look at the ET on this 7.33 for Roy Hill. The car just continues to go faster and faster. And in the pro stock finals, just as in the funny car finals, we will have a number one qualifier against the number two as Roy Hill will take on Jerry Haas. There you see the gentlemen themselves, smiling faces. This should be a great pro stock final. In fact, Jerry Haas built Roy Hill's car. For more on that, let's go down to the runoff area and Brett Kepner. Jerry, what do you think, buddy? Hey, that's great. <laughs> well, Jerry Haas and Roy Hill standing here. You'd never think a man would be so happy to run Roy Hill in the final round, but a lot of our viewers don't know it, but during the week, Jerry Haas builds race cars, and Jerry, uh, you'll be going into the final round against Roy Hill, one of the toughest men in the sport, but you build his car. Yeah, I know, but this Roy, he's, he's a tough guy. Well, yeah, just... I couldn't... If I had to run somebody, I, I, he's just a perfect guy I'd like to race. Well, you're lucky, because that's indeed who you'll be racing, and Roy, a 733. Now, uh... Haas shook the tires pretty hard here, and uh, that doesn't seem to be a problem for the Penny's Thunderbird. Well, we shook them real bad against Glidden right then, and Bill and Mike and Jim pulled the clutch out of it, and they're just doing a heck of a job with the car, and if I can just drive it, maybe we can beat Jerry, but I don't <laughs> think you'll mind. <laughs> in fact, Jerry Haas can't lose in our Pro Stock Final. Coming up, finals in all of our classes. It's the IHRA Motorcraft World Nationals. Stay right there. This looks like a major thrash to get ready for the final round here at the World Nationals. It's actually just basic maintenance for the Candies and Hughes team. Mark Oswald, the driver of the Motorcraft Thunderbird, is assisting the rest of the crew in taking the engine completely apart and checking it out to make sure that all is well for the final round. Oswald and uh, crew chief Leonard Hughes say that the only major adjustments they'll make is finding out why the fuel system apparently had problems in the semifinal rounds as the engine was not running on all eight cylinders. Other than that, they're looking for some consistency to help win this event. Well, certainly Mark Oswald, not the only guy working on his car. Remember Jerry Marconi, the number eight qualifier who knocked off Joe Amato and John Kerry? We saw the engine smoke. He could not get his car back together for the final. And so Jack Ostrander has a solo run to victory in the Motorcraft World Nationals Pro Nitro Dragster Championship. Now, Bogey Kell is preparing himself for his final in alcohol, and we talked with him about his semi. Hey, the crew really worked hard, and the Arnie's going to be tough in the finals. We feel good about it, though. We're due one. After all this work, we're due one. Well, I'll tell you, you're going to have a group of Massachusetts Yankees against the, the greatest Southern Rebel team in drag racing in neutral Ohio. This should be interesting. South's going to rise again. <laughs> yeah. Bogey Cal, the South's going to rise again. He uh, hasn't won for about nine years, but this man, Arnie Karp, certainly has. He just won the last two IHRA events you saw here on ESPN, the IHRA Summer Nationals and the Motorcraft Northern Nationals. He is hot, Bob. Now, these crews only have about 90 minutes to totally tear down these cars and engines between rounds, so it's a tremendous mechanical achievement, but they're back. Looks like Carp is out first on Kel. Kel may be in trouble. Here comes Bogey Kel. Does he have enough? I don't know. Yes, Bogey Kell has won the IHRA World Nationals. That is incredible. And Southern Thunder rolls again. One very happy man is Bogey Kell, and so is his crew. Let's take another look at it. Watch them lead the line almost together now. Bogey Kell trying to stay with Arnie Carp right beside him all the way down to the final. It takes the eyes to tell us who has won this event. The first win for Bogey Kell in nine years, and he's with Brett Kepner. Oh, it's been a long 
time. I'll tell you. It's been a you, long time. You were the one who called it. Uh, you told us <laughs> in the last round the South will rise again, and you certainly proved it here in the final. Oh, it's, well, I tell you, it's nothing like it. There's nine runner-ups I've had, and that's a win right there. It's well, been a long time. I, it's been 79 since I won one of the IHRA races. That's true, and back then it was in a dragster. That's it. That's it. Oh, thanks. Boy, I tell you, wonderful. It's nothing like the win. Well, it's certainly good to have you back in the winner's circle, and obviously Arnie Carp is a little dejected, but I'll tell you, for him, oh, three well, final round appearances it. isn't too bad. Like just, who, we didn't know who won. Yeah. It was that close. Excellent race, and Bogey, you're going to have one happy crew coming down here, flying the stars and bars in just a minute. I know you want to greet them. Good luck. All right, thanks, Brett. Time now for a quick fact, brought to you by Quaker State Motor Oil. New Quaker State with QSX keeps your engine cleaner to last longer. Whether it's a matter of picking up some debris or the racing service before the next pair of cars could race or a matter of extricating a driver from the crumbled remnants of a race car after a horrendous crash, the PTS crew is always there. The president of the Professional Track Services Crews is Dwayne Dimmitt. Dwayne, you had a drag racing career back in high school, but you moved into oval track safety over a quarter of a century ago. Yes, I started a business about 25 years ago, and I worked at various oval tracks by myself with a certain amount of people, and then we formed Professional Track Services in 1970. And we started with IHRA, I believe it's 1973. I should point out that working on the Professional Track Services Crews is quite a dangerous job at times. Yes, it can be. We had one of our uh, people injured this weekend up here, Bud Grog, but uh, we got a call from him this morning. He's going to be okay, but it can be dangerous, too. When you go down a drag strip, sometimes we reach speeds of 70 and 80 mile an hour getting to a crash scene, and when you bring a truck down to a stop, you must have all your stuff together or you can get yourself hurt. As Dwayne Dimmitt pointed out, it can be a very dangerous job working on the PTS trucks, as Bud Grog found out this weekend when a safety valve on a fire extinguisher malfunctioned and nearly blinded him. As a matter of fact, uh, Bud had done an awful lot of work helping the ESPN crew down here at the finish line area, so on behalf of our little remote crew, Bud, get well soon, and we hope to see you back on the PTS crew soon. Indeed. Thanks, Brett. Well, we've still got finals coming up in Pro Nitro Funny Cars and Pro Stocks, number one against number two in each, for IHRA Championship Racing coming up from Norwalk, Ohio. Back at Norwalk Raceway Park, we're ready for the Pro Nitro Funny Car Final, and it doesn't get any better than this, folks. Number one, Mark Oswald, will meet number two, Ed the Ace McCullough. Oswald has to be favored to win this final. He's the defending world champion. He won this same event in 1984 and again in 1985. McCullough, this is his second round appearance in 1987 to make it to a finals. Ed McCulloch has won in dominating fashion with straight and true runs. His car is really hooked up there away. McCulloch gets a little skittish, though, as the wheels come up, and he gets right near the center line, but he pulls it off. Ed McCullough has finally won an IHRA event in 1987, and he did it with a hole shot, ladies and gentlemen. Unbelievable. Mark Oswald with a 580. Ed McCullough a slower 5.84. That means McCullough left first. Boy, I can't figure out how he did this, Ted, as we watch Ed make his rollout. Let's take another look. There you see the front end of McCullough lifting first, and that decided the race. Watch the expert driving of Ed McCullough as he keeps it off the yellow line ahead of Mark Oswald to take the win. Ed, you constantly tell us how much preparation goes into this car and what a crew you have. In this final round, the car was prepared, but it was a driver's race. Your 584 beat Mark Oswald's 580, and that's what brought you the win. Well, we were just a little bit lucky there. I mean, you know, uh, everybody, every dog has his day, I guess you might say. <laughs> We've changed some things around, and uh, the car's reacting much better, and it obviously makes me look a little bit better, makes me feel a little bit better, so we'll take it. Well, not many people have been able to beat Mark Oswald in the Candies and Hughes Thunderbird this year. You were one of the few, and it's good to see the Miller American team in the winner's circle. Thank you. They're tough. And you're tough yourself, Ed. Now we'll move on to the Pro Stock Final. Once again, it's going to be number one, Roy Hill, 
who has already beaten Bob Blit and Ricky Smith against this guy, number two qualifier Jerry Haas. We said it before, he can't lose. He built both these cars. This is the third time Roy Hill has been in the finals, but he has yet to win one this year. Jerry Haas, this is his first final round appearance, and I believe there was a red light, Bob. I think so. Jerry Haas way out in front. I thought I saw that glimmer from the bottom of the Christmas tree. The red light would mean that Jerry Haas left too soon. And yes, indeed. It was a red light. The crews congratulating each other. It was over right on the starting line as Haas knew that he had to cut the Christmas tree very closely if he was to beat Roy Hill. Hill just kept going faster and faster. And look at the time faster again. 7.32, 189.87 mile an hour. Hill still going out the back door. Look at the red light start. You see Haas's front end come up. You see the red light kicking on down at the bottom of the Christmas tree. It was over right there on the starting line. Roy Hill is your 1987 Motorcraft World Nationals champion, Bob. Well, Jerry Haas's nightmare is your dream, so congratulations. It's just super. I mean, you know, I really need this, and my guys have been so good, and Mr. Penny, the whole Penny family, I mean, I hope I just give them something that was a dream to them. I really do. Well, I'll tell you, obviously, this is more than just one national event victory. This does an awful lot for you in the points race and actually makes a battle of it now. You know, it's going to be a good old race these next two races. Anybody that misses these next two races, uh, hey, let me tell you, this Motorcraft National is nothing to what it's going to be at Rockingham. And then we go back to Bristol. So, I mean, you know, if you can't be there, watch it on ESPN. I'll tell you, we couldn't have said it better ourselves. Congratulations to both of you. I know you're both happy to be in the final. And Good luck. <laughs> and we'll be back with our special Sportsman of the Week feature right after this. <laughs> In IHRA Sportsman Drag Racing, many of the competitors have rather unusual full-time jobs that add on to their Sportsman Drag Racing activities. But one of the most unusual in IHRA Racing is Gary Bowers, the two-time Stock Eliminator World Champion who is actually a school teacher in Enon, Ohio during the week. And Gary, uh, it must put a little bit of a crimp on your drag racing activities on the weekend to have to be in school five days a week. I, it certainly does in the spring and the fall. There's a lot of all-night drives on Friday and Sunday night. Uh, you teach in eighth grade, right? Correct, eighth grade history. And uh, do your students know about your drag racing activities? Uh, yes, especially after the World Championship last year. There's a lot of interest at school right now. Well, it's, it's got to keep you uh, on the go, considering you have a, a wife and children who travel with you to the races throughout the summer. And like I said, after two World Championships and eight national event victories, uh, you're on the go all year round. Yeah, correct. We race until probably November and start again in March, early April. Have you ever thought of bringing maybe some of the kids from school to the uh, events? I've uh, considered that maybe as some sort of special reward, some close event. Well, if nothing else, Gary Bowers could be one school teacher who could offer his class the ultimate field trip. Okay, thanks, Brad. And for all you thousands of sportsman drivers out there, here's a look and a listen at some of the sights and sounds of sportsman action this weekend at Norwalk before we give you a look at all the final sportsman matchups. Winning in top sportsman, Butch Sutphin, a former national champion, defeating Phil Schaefer from Asheville, Ohio. In Modified, it was one of our Sportsmen of the Week from an earlier show, Dennis Mitchell, defeating Dave Lair from Xenia, Ohio. Quick Rod went to Dick Fox from Indianapolis, Indiana, over John Bookout from Lockport, New York. And in Superstock, Brent Soule upset one of our Sportsmen of the Week, Mike Boyles in the good old Charlie Brown car. Super Rod, Tim McGuire, the defending IHRA World Champion, defeated Gerald Highway. And in Hot Rod, Gerald Thomas from Sanford, North Carolina, over Ron Mayberry, both of those gentlemen in the top 10. Stock Eliminator found Donald Barnes defeating David Wood. And congratulations to all our sportsmen winners. Now here's Brett with a special report on a major announcement for the 88 IHRA season. We're in the executive offices of Norwalk Raceway Park while here during the running of the World Nationals, a major breakthrough is taking place. Mr. Chuck Clayton, Mr. Rich Smith, and the IHRA sponsor liaison, Butch McCall, are signing the contract for the 1988 Hearst Mr. Gasket Pro Stock Shootout. A 20% increase across the board will raise the winner's share of the purse to $20,000 during the 1988 edition. And of course, the Mr. Gasket Pro Stock Shootout will be seen right here on ESPN. Prize money going up in IHRA Championship Drag Racing here at the World Nationals.
Thanks, Brett. We'll be back with final standings and a special salute to all of the competition here at Norwalk right after these important messages. So stay with us. More IHRA action coming up. It's been a great weekend here at the IHRA Motorcraft World Nationals, and herewith we'd like to offer a little musical salute to all the competitors. A look at the wonderful world of drag racing. Here's the point standings in Pro Nitro Dragster. Gene Snow maintains that lead. Joe Amato in second with Mike Brotherton bringing up third place. In Pro Nitro Plenty Car, Doc Holliday with a great semifinal showing here jumps ahead of Kenny Bernstein into second place. Mark Oswald still on top. Ricky Smith maintains the defending the championship in Pro Stock with a points lead over Roy Hill and Tim Neighbors. And in Pro Alcohol Funny Cars, Bob Newberry maintains his lead, albeit a narrow one, over Don DeFluter. We hope you've enjoyed today's coverage of the Motorcraft World Nationals. Ted, we saw some guys come in here on winning streaks, but they're going to leave without them. Mark Oswald's leaving without his. Ed the Ace McCullough in the Miller American Oldsmobile stopped Mark. Dan Pastorini in the Coors Light Silver Bullet stopped Gene Snow. And we have a new winner in Pro Stock, Roy Hill. Well, Brett Kepner has been covering the action at Trackside all day. Let's get his closing thoughts on today's events now. The 1987 edition of the International Hot Rod Association Motorcraft World Nationals was certainly one of the most upset-ridden events of the 87 IHRA season. But Roy Hill's run to the Pro Stock Championship was that of a man possessed. Dropping current World Championship points leader Ricky Smith in the opening round of competition, Bob Glidden's incredible Motorcraft Thunderbird in round two, the 1987 Pro-Am Nationals Pro Stock Champion, Tim Neighbors in the third round, and of course Jerry Haas, the chassis builder in the final, was one of the greatest displays of natural driving talent we've seen in Pro Stock Eliminator this year. Of course, Mark Oswald's upset loss in Pro Funny Car came as a shock to many, but Ed the Ace McCulloch has proven time and time again that he can handle the Miller American Oldsmobile better than anybody. And of course, Jack Ostrander, who got to celebrate his first ever national event win in Pro Nitro Dragster, despite the anticlimactic sense of it in making a single run when Jerry Marconi couldn't fire up. Regardless, it was a wild event. No question that it will continue to be wild on the 1987 IHRA Tour. Back to you, gentlemen. Thank you, Brandon. You'll see that next event, the U.S. Open Nationals, right here on ESPN from Rockingham International Dragway in North Carolina. Check your local listings for that. And you can check out the Terry's Fall Nationals in person at Bristol, Tennessee. There's a phone number for tickets. This ESPN event has been brought to you by Motorcraft. Quality parts for all makes of cars and trucks. They exceed the need. And by Drag Review. All you need to know about drag racing. We hope you've enjoyed our coverage of the Motorcraft World Nationals from Norwalk, Ohio. For Ted Jones and Brett Kepner, I'm Bob Barsha. See you next time from Rockingham, North Carolina. For now, so long from Norwalk Raceway in Norwalk, Ohio.